So you're looking to get into the motorcycling world, but you're not super stoked on the sport bike life. Maybe you were picked last in gym class and now you resent anything with sporty athleticism. You'd prefer to cruise around town with your friends between the coffee shop and record store rather than dragging knee at the track or doing top speed pulls on the highway. Maybe you've already picked out your three quarters helmet and vintage inspired riding jacket and you want to get a motorcycle that reflects your classic aesthetic and lifestyle. You want a more laid back motorcycling experience prioritizing the joy of the ride and the thirst for adventure. New riders who are flirting with the cruiser life are often too cool and disinterested in specs and power figures like the sport bike chads on the internet but listen up I'm going to tell you anyway because you don't want to end up with the carbureted lump that is still rocking drum brakes in the year of our lord 2022. There are plenty of cruiser motorcycles that are accessible to beginners, stylish, and make enough power to not bore you after your first riding season. And if you don't want to get bored of the same stale motorcycle content on YouTube, make sure you click the notification bell on the screen to get alerted every time a new video drops from Yami Noob. This video is brought to you by Rockform, by the way, the best choice in motorcycle phone mounts. I'll tell you more about them later in the show. Without further ado, here are my picks for the top five beginner cruiser motorcycles. The first motorcycle on our list is the Honda Rebel 500. The Rebel 500 is Honda's mid-sized cruiser motorcycle sitting between the 300 and 1100 cc models. Honda has been making the Rebel 250, now replaced by the 300, since 1985 as a way to attract a new younger audience to motorcycling, and they did a pretty good job. Its small stature and low weight make it super accessible and non-threatening. You may have even ridden and subsequently dropped one on your MSF class, a fate bestowed upon many Rebel 250s leaving the Honda factory. Following the success of the Rebel 250 and after a few trial runs with the Rebel 450 in the late 80s, Honda began selling Rebel 500s in 2017. The 500 increased the displacement to 471 cc's in a liquid-cooled parallel twin configuration while still maintaining the easygoing geometry that younger or smaller riders have come to expect from the Rebel platform. It has a 27-inch seat height that would be great for all the short kings out there. This motorcycle makes 47 horsepower and 33 foot-pounds of torque. With a curb weight of only 408 pounds, the Rebel 500 has plenty of power for new riders who are just getting their bearings. With its six-speed transmission and a top speed of 95 miles per hour, the Rebel 500 is comfortable on just about any street and is tasked with traversing. The additional 185 cubes in the Rebel 500 will give you a big enough bump in power to maintain your interest in usability longer than the Rebel 300 would. Some entry-level motorcycles make sacrifices on build quality or features, but that is not the case with the Rebel. That's because it's a Honda. It has higher end finishes you may not expect from a bike designed for Mimedi Rider's first foray into the sport. It is a contemporary cruiser aesthetic with a blacked out frame, engine, and wheels with LED lighting. The Rebel 500 has modern components that may come in handy for a new rider like a slipper assist clutch for an easy clutch pull and an updated digital speedometer with a gear position indicator and optional ABS for those of you who really need it. There are some optional and additional features for riders who want a more retro styled look on the Rebel including the optional ABS. The SE trim comes with a diamond stitch solo seat and quarter fairing. This trim would cost $6,899 more than the base model coming in at $6,399, which is very entry level and appropriately priced for a beginner. And if you're going to be riding a cruiser, you better make sure you protect your precious electronics before the V-twin vibration shakes loose the entire contents of your pockets. You've got the wallet chain to make sure you don't lose your cash and photos of your hentai girlfriend. You should probably take some measurements to protect your phone as well. Luckily, Rockform has you covered. Rockform has one of the best phone cases and handlebar mounts available for motorcyclists. The cases are drop tested from six feet, which should be more than satisfactory unless you got plans to jump your cruiser across the Grand Canyon, Evil Knievel style, and like you have other things to worry about. Rockform has mounts for both cruisers and sport bikes, so you have no problem finding which one to match your bike or riding style. Follow the link below to check out what Rockform has to offer. Use the code YN25 to get 25% off your order. Click the link down below. Use that code YN25, 25% off your order. Now let's keep on moving with our cruisers. The next motorcycle on our list of best beginner cruisers is the Yamaha Bolt R-Spec. The Bolt has a bit larger displacement than the Honda Rebel 500, but it should still be a decent entry into motorcycling for a rider who's a bit older and more responsible enough to handle those extra CCs. Yamaha has made the Bolt since 2013 and has come in a few different trim models including the Bolt, the Bolt R-Spec, and even a Bolt Scrambler, but now is currently only manufacturing the R-Spec configuration, which Yamaha refers to as a performance bobber. 
Interesting word choice. The bowl is clearly an homage to the Sportster line from Harley Davidson with its simplistic, stripped down styling, solo seat, and air cooled 942cc V twin. Similarly to the Sportster, the Bolt is known for having a very customizable platform, which makes it a good option for riders who want to update and modify their bikes to fit their unique tastes. The R Spec Bolt makes 69. Nice. Horsepower and 59 foot pounds of torque, and is tuned for low to mid range power. Weighing in at 540 pounds, it is a little heavier than a smaller cruiser like the Rebel, but it should still be manageable for new riders with its low 27 inch seat height and balanced center of gravity from the V twin engine. The Bolt is very much a simplistic retro cruiser with limited tech and an analog feel while still being updated enough to be reliable and smooth riding motorcycle. It has modern features like dual piggyback reservoir shocks in the rear, 298mm floating brake disc rotors, and a digital LCD dash. While having modern components, Yamaha has managed to evoke a nostalgic and retro feel with the bulk with its high-end gas tank, belt drive, mag wheels, and even a classy headlight so you can really sports your cosplay. The bulk can be had for $8,599 from the dealership and while that is not the cheapest cruiser out there the bolt should be more than enough motorcycle for you to keep and keep a new rider entertained for more than a few seasons especially if you want to customize it the next bike on our list of best beginner cruisers is none other than the royal enfield interceptor 650 and okay while the interceptor isn't a hundred percent a cruiser motorcycle in the standard style as it sports mid controls flat handlebars and a parallel twin engine it is definitely a cruiser in its purpose and intention this is a retro style bike that is designed for urban commuting or casual backroad adventures. The Interceptor 650 is a great option for newer riders who are attracted to the cafe racer style motorcycles but want something modern, amenable, and super affordable. The Interceptor 650 in Canyon Red costs $5,999, making it the least expensive motorcycle on our list. Bearing that in mind, there are definitely a few budget components like the Bi-Bri, Bi-Brembo brakes, the CEAT tires, and the non-adjustable front forks, but for a bike that isn't going to be breaking any land speed records, these totally don't detract from the overall riding experience and can ultimately be upgraded down the road if you were so inclined. It has an air-cooled 648cc parallel twin, making 47 horsepower and 38 foot-pounds of torque. The twin engine lends itself to a linear power band, and the six-speed gearbox feels smooth and balanced across the rev range. It is a stylish looking motorcycle that the average person wouldn't be able to tell costs practically half of what some of the cruisers on our list costs. It comes in several different colorways, has a large flat stitched cafe style seat and piggyback reservoir rear shocks. Royal Enfield has been changing their reputation in America lately as they improve their build quality and reliability. Because of that, we had to buy one and see for ourselves. Yes, that's right. In case you missed it, we actually have a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 as the latest bike in our beginner bike giveaway series. We've already got some cool content on this bike as we document our first few rides and impressions. You can find these videos over on the channel if you missed them. If you want to stay up to date on the Royal Enfield giveaway series, click the link down below and click the bell to get notified when we release new videos. We'll have a lot of great content on this bike coming up and you're not going to want to miss it. To get entered to win this bike, just go to yamanoob.co, choose which membership is right for you, get access to our Discord server where you can chat with the Yamanoob team, talk about bikes, contribute to the Yamcast, and of course, swap memes. Members also get access to exclusive content, rider meetups, and even discounts on gear from shop.yamanoob.co. I also do a weekly live stream with the boys 30 minutes on Monday. Ask me anything you want. This is the best way to support our channel, and in return, you could win this motorcycle. Now, back to the list. Number four on our list is the Indian Scout 60. Indian has been making the Scout for over 100 years, making it only slightly older than the DRZ 400, but the most recent iteration here has been in production since 2015 after Polaris purchased Indian and revamped the Scout line. The Indian Scout used to be one of the most popular motorcycles in America up until World War II, but until 2011, it seemed more like Indian motorcycles were being pulled out of rusty junk heaps by Mike Wolf on American pickers and riding down the road. The Scout has always been sold in multiple sizes and displacement, and it's cool to see that Indian maintained that tradition with the Scout 60. The Scout 60 shares the same frame and geometry of the larger Scout, but with a slightly smaller 1000cc or 60 cubic inch engine catered towards more novice or price conscious riders. The Scout 60 is not going to be the best option for riders with absolutely zero experience or limited funds, but it is a cool option for older riders who are willing to shell out a little extra cash for a more premium motorcycle. The Scout 60 costs $10,749 from the factory, and it makes 78 horsepower and 65 foot-pounds of torque from its liquid-cooled 1000cc V-twin engine. 
It is definitely on the heavier side with a curb weight of 543 pounds, but it still has a very approachable 26 inch seat height that will make just about anyone feel comfortable riding on it despite its size. Like I mentioned previously, Indian has been making the Scout on and off since 1919, and its most current iteration owes much of its style to the original aesthetic choices that have become trademarks of the brand. The Scout has a large curved gas tank, forward controls, and a solo seat, pulled back handlebars, and not to mention the emblematic 130 front width tire that has become an instantly recognizable aspect of Scout motorcycles from India. It has a 299mm brake disc with dual piston calipers in the front with a single piston caliper in the rear, preload adjustable rear shocks, and a digital dash with a tack and speedometer. It has limited tech which isn't really necessary for a bike of this style, but ABS is an option from Indian for an additional $900. Aside from the smaller engine displacement 130ccs down from the 1130cc power plant of the standard Scout model, the Scout 60 is also limited to a 5-speed transmission. Otherwise, the bikes share almost identical components, making the Scout 60 one of the more put-together bikes on our list. The last motorcycle is the Harley-Davidson Sportster Iron 883. It is hard to make any sort of cruiser video and not mention HD. Similarly to Indian, Harley has been making the Sportster forever and has become ubiquitous as the entry-level cruiser for true patriots that only ride real bikes. The Sportster, disregarding the new Sportster S and Nightster models, has been mostly unchanged and mechanically since the 1980s. Although they now have a 5-speed transmission, fuel injection, and more stylish cosmetic choices. The Iron 883 is a pretty approachable beginner bike in most ways except for its price tag of almost $11,249 brand new. But luckily, these bikes are so commonly purchased to be someone's first Harley before trading up to a soft tail or a bagger, it is not uncommon to find them with pretty low miles at your local dealership. You can find these used all day long. The 1200 is a great option too. The Iron has an 883 air-cooled V-twin engine that makes roughly 50 horsepower and 54 foot-pounds of torque, weighing in at 564 pounds, wet and ready to ride. It is far from a performance machine, but it is hard to deny that the Iron is likely the best-looking bike on this list and one of the most iconic bikes in history. It also created the archetype that many metric cruisers are often trying to emulate. Sportsters are known for being incredibly customizable with huge aftermarket support, and with countless aftermarket options, it isn't too difficult to improve the lackluster options with a few simple upgrades. While being somewhat heavy and slightly underpowered in stock form, the Iron 883 handles decently well for a cruiser. The low center of gravity, narrow frame, and mid-forward controls all make it pretty easy to control while you experience all of the 27 degrees of lean angle. You won't be dragging much of anything on a Sportster except maybe some leather handlebar tassels. Fact, water makes different sounds as it is poured depending on the temperature. As water gets warmer, the molecules become more energized, creating a thinner viscosity. This means that hot water creates a higher pitch sound than the thicker cold water when poured. Goodbye. <laughs>